Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I will be discussing how COVID-19 has affected my dental school experience. My name is Connor, and I'm a second year dental student at Roseman University's College of Dental Medicine. I started school in August of 2019, so most of my first year of dental school wasn't affected by COVID. But March of this year will mark one year of attending school during COVID, and so I wanted to walk through some of the changes that have occurred and how that's affected my dental school experience, as well as how I've seen that affect the other classes at Roseman. Whether you've already been accepted or you're eagerly awaiting that news, I'm sure you're wondering what attending dental school in the midst of a pandemic is like. You're trying to figure out if students graduating will be affected, if there are enough patients in the clinic and what lectures will be like and hopefully this video will answer some of your questions if your questions aren't answered feel free to leave your questions in the comments down below or reach out to me on instagram so let's dive in so first i'll go ahead and talk about the clinical ways in which COVID has affected my dental school experience. And then I'll discuss the ways in which our lectures have been changed. So first thing you get to school, you walk in and you have your temperature checked. And after that, anytime you're re-entering the building, you do not receive a temperature check. So due to our state government, when we returned to school on January 4th, we began weekly COVID testing. So each student is assigned a time in which they go and they provide a nasal swab sample. Uh, the test that we're using at Roseman is the Binax Now AG test, or however you say that. After you provide your sample, you wait until you are emailed with the results. And if you have a positive test, then you can go and get a second test that is different from the test that the school is using. And if that test is positive as well, then you begin the 10 day quarantine as directed by the CDC. Regardless of whether or not you've been vaccinated, all students are currently being tested for COVID-19. So the next thing that I want to talk about is PPE or personal protective equipment. And before COVID, any student working with a patient was required to wear gloves, a disposable jacket or gown, a mask, and eye protection. Now with the protocols that are in place, any student that is in the clinic is required to wear eye protection as well as a face mask and a disposable gown or jacket. For those students who are working with patients, in addition to the jacket and eye protection and face mask, they are also required to wear an N95 mask, a face shield, and gloves. And the N95 masks absolutely kill my ears. And our school has provided those ear savers, but mine broke. Once we are in an operatory working with a patient, we are asked to stay in that operatory and another student will be sent to go and get any supplies that are needed that weren't gotten during the setup for the procedure. As far as procedures and how procedures were affected, from March 17th until May 11th, the clinic was closed except for emergency patients and procedures. And from May until we started our second year in August, students weren't required to come into the clinic, but it was done on a volunteer basis so that those students who weren't comfortable coming in due to COVID weren't required to do so. Uh, in August, upon starting our second year, we had a mandatory 
PPE training before we could return to the clinic. Upon completing the PPE training, we were then able to perform any of the procedures that we had passed the competency for. So this allowed me to complete a composite filling on tooth number 32, so way in the back. And I was also able to do two very simple extractions, but that was super cool because I was at the start of my second year in dental school getting to extract somebody's teeth. It was absolutely awesome. As far as cleanings or scaling and root planing, SRPs, we can no longer use the Cavitron because of the aerosol that it creates. And so we have to use hand scaling instruments. So it takes more effort and significantly more time. And it is something that I'm terrible at. I'm still getting used to it. And it has brought an immense appreciation for dental hygienists and the work that they do. So shout out to all the hygienists out there. Thank you, thank you. So on top of all the craziness with COVID already, in October, one of the two main air compressors at the school malfunctioned and exploded, shutting down the school for another eight days. So upon returning from this forced break, there was greater concern from the administration about whether or not the fourth year students would be competent when they are graduating, which they totally will be, but whatever. Um, so all, all procedures were to be completed by a fourth year student. So if you were paired up with a fourth year student and they had a procedure that they were comfortable with you doing and you were comfortable doing, before you could go ahead and do that procedure. But after COVID and especially after this explosion at our school, um, sorry, I'm freezing. Um, now, if the fourth year student that you're paired up with doesn't need the procedure, rather than us being able to perform the procedure, all of the other fourth year students in the team have priority for that procedure and only if none of them want or need to perform the procedure are we then allowed to be the primary provider for that procedure. Which is fine and it makes sense but it's a little disappointing just because of the experiences that we were having pre-COVID or even at the beginning of our D2 year. Um, thankfully, since coming back from winter break, it's been more like the beginning of our second year, and we've been super busy this last week and getting a lot of really good experience. Uh, Roseman is providing a voucher that covers the cost of a comprehensive exam for a new patient, as well as $250 towards any treatment they receive after that. So it's something that has been really, really great for us as far as experience and procedures, but it's also something so beneficial for our patients, especially those who are hit financially due to COVID. As far as the number of patients and how that's been affected by COVID, it's a little hard to tell because we weren't in the clinic as much during our first year as we have been in our second year. But a busy day is four patients per chair. Probably a normal day is two patients per chair. And then a slow day is nobody shows up. And I've had all of those since coming back uh, and starting my second year. But upon our return from winter break, like I said, this week's been super busy and we've had pretty much two patients in the morning, two patients in the afternoon in every chair. So it has been super busy and a lot of fun. It seems like a lot of patients have been able to come in more frequently and get more of their treatment finished, which is really great because some of them need uh, a lot of work 
And so to be able to get them through their treatment plans is really beneficial for their oral health. So as far as what the clinical experience is like from the patient's perspective, each patient has their temperature checked when they arrive at the school. And then when they come upstairs to the clinic, we seat them, we ask them if they've had any COVID-like symptoms or if they've been in contact with anyone who's tested positive for COVID, as well as having them rinse for one minute with a peroxyl rinse. Uh, they also wear their mask whenever we are walking them to go and take x-rays or a pano so that we can keep everyone as safe as possible. Kind of a random, not really clinical, not really lecture uh, bit of information is any and all extracurricular activities that were planned to be at the school have been canceled and at this point nothing can be planned on campus if it is an extracurricular activity. Now to talk about how our lectures have been affected by COVID. So like I mentioned, things shut down on March 16th and our first class began on March 30th. So we had a little bit of a break while things were being put in place and the course was being organized to be done remotely or via Zoom. Um, and during COVID, we've kind of had three main ways in which our lectures have taken place. So the first one being real-time lectures over Zoom. This is some people's favorite. It's not my personal preference, um, but there are students who like that having a real-time lecture, you're engaging with the professor, you can ask questions in the moment when you're covering the material, and you also have this set time where you're gonna be doing school, and if you need that motivation, then I absolutely can understand why you would prefer that. The second method in which we've had lectures are pre-recorded lectures, and this is my personal favorite. So the professor will pre-record each of the lectures and post those videos online for students to view at their own time and at their own pace. And then typically a professor doing this will also have a Q&A session, which is live via Zoom, to answer any and all questions. Maybe they'll have some more learning activities for us to do so that we can uh, expound upon the things that were covered in the video lectures. And the reason I like this is because it allows me to wake up early, get it done first thing in the morning, and then I don't have to worry about missing out, spending time with my family. And it also allows me to get it done faster because you can do it on one and a half or two times speed. And this is just my favorite. It makes the most sense to me because students can do it at their own pace while still having a little bit of time with the professor so that they can ask those questions. And also I found that professors who do this, the lectures are very straightforward, focused on the material, and they don't take up more time simply because they have more time. The third method in which we've had lectures was a combined on-campus via Zoom method, which was pretty bad. So each classroom can sit 100 students, but due to COVID guidelines, they couldn't have that many students in a classroom. And so our classrooms, they have little breakout rooms where five to 10 students can comfortably fit. And so they would have half of the class or so in the main classroom and then the remaining students would be in those breakout rooms on Zoom. And 
that was just bad because we had to be on campus, but we couldn't hear the students asking questions in the classroom, or we couldn't hear them answering questions in the classroom. And so those students who were in those breakout rooms were just really missing out on the lecture experience. And so thankfully we haven't really done that since we did that for one or two classes. Um, but currently there isn't a standard for how professors are doing these courses. The course we're in right now, oral pathology, is pre-recorded, so that has been wonderful, but we'll see what the next class brings. If a course had a sim clinic or a lab portion to it, that of course had to be done on campus in person, and they would split up the class and either half of the class would do all of the sim clinic portion of that course, while the other half of the class did the lecture portion of that course, and then they would swap or it would be split up morning and afternoon, so half of the class would be doing the lab portion while the other half was doing the lecture portion, and then it would switch in the afternoon so that that way we could meet all of the social distancing and other COVID guidelines that were in place. In summary, this is what dental school during a pandemic is like. Lots of classes via Zoom, not as much experience in the clinic, but at the end of the day, people will graduate, you'll still become a dentist, and it's been quite an interesting part of my dental school experience. So go ahead and comment down below and share what your dental school experience has been like during COVID. Also, go ahead and subscribe and follow me on Instagram so that you don't miss out on any of my content or any of the videos that will be coming in the near future. So I know that this video has been a long one, but if anyone made it to the end, thank you so, so much for using your time to watch my video. I hope that you learned something from it and that you found it beneficial, but it really means a lot to me that you would use your time to hear my ramblings about uh, dental school during COVID. So thank you, thank you, I really appreciate it.